Hello, I'm Brent Wilsey, and with me is Chase Wilsey. We're from Wilsey Asset Management. And as a reminder, if you like the post you see here today, make sure you hit that like button on Facebook, or better yet, share it with your friends if you think they could benefit from this. Well, today, the Fed, no change of the Fed. It's kept it the same, and people are saying, who cares? And actually, I saw that about 24% of people only know who Janet Yellen is. Most people don't know who she is. They don't know what the Fed even does. So I thought we should explain <laughs> how the Fed affects you today. This is the mystery of the Fed. No one knows what they do, and they're very important. They, I've heard they're, um, they're more important to, than the president when it comes to the economy. You're right. And see, and this is because you're in finance. But the average person out there does not understand how important the Fed is. What they do is you talk about your mortgage and your auto loans. Guess who sets those rates? It's all based on the Federal Reserve interest rates they charge. Yeah, I mean, they, they have a huge, you know, stronghold on what goes on the economy. Credit cards, uh, CDs, mm -hmm. your savings rate, that's all predicated off of the interest rates that, you know, the Fed aims to set. They really affect our everyday lives, and people don't realize that. Other things they do is they set the money supply, which will move inflation up or down, and businesses. Yeah, the, again, so important to the economy and you know it's really important to understand what's going on when it comes to the fed especially if you're investing make sure you, <laughs> you know what's going you on what's with going the fed on. right it all ties back to the federal reserve so when you hear about the fed and i'm not even sure if the evening news reports what the fed does do you know i don't really watch evening news i haven't watched the evening news i don't think my whole life yeah, <laughs> I don't, I don't but i'm just curious if they even talk about what the fed does you know, I don't think they do. So yeah, I mean, I, I'm not too concerned about those car crash stories or anything else. No. I'm much more interested in what the Fed do today. How's it going to affect my mortgage? <laughs> How's it going to affect my car loans? How's it going to affect my credit cards? That's what I'm concerned about. That's why the Eden News should talk about this. But not you get it here. Uh, let's talk about the economy. Uh, economic news came out today. The consumer price index year over year, 1% increase, but the core was 2.3%. Not a big move. Yeah, well, again, the core is always more important because the core excludes those volatile, you know, uh, subsections of food and energy. And as we know, energy has been so volatile lately. Uh, year over year, it's down 6%. So that has a huge drag on inflation year over year. And we got to realize that was in February. In March, it's going to be a whole new ball game because rates, are not rates, but uh, oil is going up in price, gas prices are going up, so it's going to change. What was really strong in the CPI was uh, health and medical expenses are rising, but energy down. Next month, we're going to see it up. Housing starts looking pretty strong. 1.178 million, these are on an annual basis. Last period, 1.099, so we're seeing some increase in housing starts. Yeah, we, we did see a little fall in the housing permits, though. They were down 3.1% not too concerned there because year over year big number here single family permits up 17 percent we like that year over year don't we That's oh love the year yes. over year industrial production another important thing down 0.5 percent but actually it's because of utilities which is part of industrial production they were down because of warmer weather this is kind of volatile season with uh warmer weather back east and stuff oh makes sense less utility bills you know uh, lower prices, lower industrial production. Right. All makes sense in the end. And what happened was vehicles, which are normally strong, and they're kind of weak this time. They're down 0.1%, but business equipment jumped 0.6%. And we like to see that. Business equipment, they're buying more. That's good for the companies. Yeah, capital expenditures, that means those yes. businesses are going out and improving themselves. So always good to see that. Right. And then lastly, today we saw oil inventories up 1.3 million barrels. At first glance, that doesn't look very good because, oh, that, that, that's a, a negative. But it's not really a negative, is it? No, I mean, it, it was actually half of what the analysts had expected for it to be. And also today we heard, you know, continued talk about the OPEC and non-OPEC nations getting together and talking about a freeze coming up. I believe that meeting is April 17th. So that is a huge thing to look out for. And what you don't see on the surface is refineries are increasing their production. Gasoline inventories fell by seven, 700,000 barrels, almost a million barrels as well. And demand is strong for oil. So we got some things changing here in the future. And that's why oil prices were up about 56 uh, today, I think at the close of West Texas, well, I think 38.47 a barrel closed that today. Over 38, wow, that's a big number there. Remember 26? Yeah. <laughs> say, I was going to 20, going to 20. I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, company for the day is Bank of America, and I see Bank of America here. Bank of America had a nice run up from the low down there. Uh, right now, trades around $13 a share, has about a high of $18 a share. So looking pretty good, but is Bank of America a buy? I think so. I, I think it looks like a pretty strong company. Big thing that we look at here, 
price to tangible book value, 78 cents versus the industry average of $1.17. What this means is you're paying 78 cents on the dollar for the tangible assets of this company. That sounds like a great deal. <laughs> it's a fire sale. It's what it actually is. Fire sale there. So uh, one year, their earnings per share are up 263% versus 20%. What this shows me is they fixed all the problems from a year ago. Their earnings weren't really up that much, but they got rid of all those expenses before. Now they're back on the norm. Industry up 20%. And the profit margin still stands at 19%, slightly below the industry average 21%. So I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to see they're taking a few more cost-cutting measures to maybe get that profit margin up. Yeah. And then lastly, the December uh, 2017 earnings per share, $1.64. We take our 40-year average Ford PE of 16.5. Give you a target sell price of $27 a share. I've talked about, we've talked about how we like banking in your portfolio. I think this one makes some sense for portfolios. Well, I mean, gosh, that's over 100% return. I believe they pay a dividend right now of 1.7% as well. So. You know, they, they have a lot of potential for growth there, mm -hmm. and you're getting a nice 1.7% right now if you're, you're just holding the stock. And I think we could see that dividend rise in future years as well. Oh, I definitely think so. So maybe you think this is all confusing, like, I don't understand investing, I, I just get, I just don't do it because I don't understand it. Well, that's what we're here for. You wanna have a conversation with us, give us a call at 858-546-4306 or visit our website, smartinvesting2000.com. Be sure to go there now because Saturday, this Saturday, March 19th, coming up quick at Nash University in Rancho Bernardo uh, from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. We will be hosting a workshop and there we'll be going over how you should invest in 2016. We'll be analyzing a stock that could potentially be a binary portfolio. That company is Qualcomm. We'll be reviewing stock fundamental analysis and why it's successful, explaining when to buy and sell stock, and going over the five common mistakes the average investor makes. We'll hope to see you there. And again, don't forget to hit that like button. Have a great day.